Good morning, dear church, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. We, my wife and I, had a, a small function this morning, and so thankfully we were able to make it in time. Um, let me greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And even as we hold services and we uh, enjoy this fellowship right now, Praveen and uh, Joshila have gone to our sister church in uh, Vanastali Puram and they are holding services there for them. So it is uh, just wonderful that we can, uh, we can have that kind of partnership with this church and we pray that God will continue to bless our partnership and our fellowship. In, uh, in, my, in conversations with my sister, and some of you know that she lost her husband uh, a few months back, we you know, kept talking about uh, people dying maturely sometimes, people dying suddenly or tragically, and she mentioned about some of her friends who, you know, lost their loved ones, sometimes young people in the family. And especially after COVID, uh, this has been something that has been happening regularly. And there is always this question, why? Why does this happen? Especially when we as God's people, as disciples of Jesus, those who believe in Christ our Lord, we keep wondering, uh, why is it that though we pray, many times we continue to see suffering, difficulty, problems and tragically situations that are, you know, like I explained about death. We constantly are troubled by so many questions. And, one of the, and some, some of the introspection we do is, especially when we pray, we ask ourselves, if we don't get the answer, if we don't receive the, uh, you know, the, the deliverance that we are praying for, or the healing that we are praying for, or the protection that we are praying for, we keep wondering, where am I going wrong? We wonder, am I not praying enough? Uh, am I not saying the right words? Am I praying in a wrong way? Should I put more time in my prayer? Or should I, uh, should, shouldn't God, you know, answer my prayer in proportion to the time I put in? And sometimes we think that more time in prayer is supposed to be more effective. And when we do that, and if we don't get the answer the way we want to get it, we keep wondering, what is wrong with my prayer? And then, of course, many a times we question our faith. Do I have faith? Is my faith faulty? Is my faith not sufficient? And then we blame ourselves and keep wondering. And, of course, there are others who will blame God. It says, I don't want to trust in this God who does not answer my prayers. You know, what I've begun to see especially with the parable that was read to us, that many times we have the wrong concepts of prayer. You know, one of the major mistakes that Christians make with regards to prayer is that they think prayer is a transaction. Right? What is a transaction? You have input, and hence there must be output. Right? Uh, you input time and effort and uh, all the devotion and then you think well automatically there has to be a output isn't it now I deserve a reward I deserve an answer from the Lord and this is how most people not just Christians understand prayer and I think that is one thing that we need to look at and which I would like to do today. We think prayer equals time and effort and sacrifice and offerings 
that we do and think that automatically there has to be a uh, an output a you know a result prayer is something that we look at for want of a better word i'll use it i'll use the word transaction it's like a transaction that you do you give your money to the you know to the whoever owns your goods and then you get have to get goods you can't give money and not get anything back right um but you know something when we look at prayer as a transaction what we are actually trying to do and this is where i think we need to be so careful we are trying to manipulate god uh just like we like to manipulate people and authority we think that by praying in a certain way by praying long enough by praying right with the right posture by praying this way or that way we can somehow get god to answer me i can force his arms i can force his hands to do something for me that i am praying for right and this was the way most people did and most nations do especially in the time of israel in the old covenant most of the surrounding nations their concept of prayer was that in fact it was so gruesome sometimes that they used to go to the temples and do sacrifices and some of those sacrifices were human sacrifices they used to sacrifice their babies to force god to answer them to force god to bless them bless them with good crops bless them with prosperity bless them with this and that and all the other things this is the concept of those nations surrounding israel who tried to look at their god as a transactional god as a god who has to be appeased and pleased so that he will answer otherwise he is not going to bless you unless you put your time unless you put your effort he is not going to bless you but that's what jesus wants us to correct with regards to our behavior our, our understanding of prayer let me now tell you what jesus wants us to understand prayer is not a transaction prayer is a relationship the word relationship should be very familiar to all of us because that's what we have been studying and learning through our incarnational trinitarian theology what we have to understand is that we are praying to a god who is not a vending machine we are praying to a god who is not a banya sitting behind the counter waiting for your money so that he can give you something no we are praying to a loving father do we i mean can we recognize that and and begin to really help us to see uh, and help us to change the way we pray we are praying and crying to a benevolent loving caring father or the question is how do we understand this god that we are praying to do we look at him as a loving father or is he a selfish egoistic narcissistic tyrant like some people like to believe right is god truly interested in us and our welfare or is he uncaring and is he indeed a controlling bully and that's how some people have concluded when they don't get the kind of answers that they you know they are praying for we sometimes look at god as as though he is trying to get something from us right he wants to be worshiped and he is being so selfish you know i remember a uh a, a story that one of the pastors i was listening to said uh this person was traveling in a train and uh overnight he slept in the train early morning he got up he was a christian he went and he uh went you know through the corridor towards the door exit door and he was singing a song because he wanted to worship god in the morning 
And one of the, the, the person was sitting beside him and he came back and asked him, what were you doing in this uh, train? He said, I was worshipping God. And immediately this person who was his co-passenger said, oh, you got a, such a selfish God, is it? Do you have to worship him in the morning? Or will he, he I mean, he's not pleased with you? And that got him thinking. He had to ask this question, what kind of a God do I worship? Does he want my worship? Does he want my worship and only then he will bless me? So that's a question that we need to ask. And this is the reason why the parable that we read is the reason why Jesus uh, helped us to understand. Of course, the context is a little different, but we'll come to that in a, in a moment. But let's just go through the, through the parable and I'll just pick up some, uh, uh, la some lines from it. In the, he begins by saying, then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. Notice those. Uh, notice how Jesus understands how we begin to lose heart. He's saying you need to pray. He's not saying you shouldn't pray. But not to lose heart. And that's exactly what happens to some. They pray. They don't find the answers the way they want it. And then they lose heart. They stop praying. Or they question themselves. I'm not praying properly. I'm not praying correctly. I'm not using the right language. Maybe I should learn Hebrew. And only then he will listen to me. You know, and these are questions that we go through. You know, and Jesus want us, notice the word, not to lose heart. To that, that to me is showing that Jesus wants us to continue in a relationship. Prayer is a conversation to a heavenly being, a heavenly father. It's a conversation. You have a conversation only with somebody you have a relationship with. Right? It's only with some, when, when we have a relationship with somebody, you have a conversation. Otherwise, can you have a conversation with a rock or a tree? Uh, some people like to, but then, uh, but that's not what we you know, are given to understand in a relationship. When we lose a relationship, we stop the conversation. You know, we become kati like they say. You know? When you say kati, what do you mean? You don't talk. <laughs> you don't want to talk to the person. You move away from the person. Right? And you lose a relationship. Jesus is saying, don't lose heart. Don't lose your relationship. Pray, but don't lose your relationship. Not to lose heart. He understood that we had faulty notions and he is correcting those notions for us when we pray. We must understand, prayer is not to control or to manipulate God. You cannot control God. Some people think they can. And that's how they go into bizarre kind of you know, activities, thinking they can control God. Did you hear recently about what happened in Kerala? There was a human sacrifice. I think it was two ladies who were uh, killed and body parts cut and uh, part of witchcraft. But what, what, are, what is that? What are they doing? They are trying to control the deity, whichever deity they are worshipping. They think that if they do these things, they can control that deity that they believe in. It is so, so sad that these wrong concepts of prayer leads people to do such hideous, gruesome things. See, it shows that when we do these things and question ourselves, we don't believe in a loving God. We don't believe in a caring God. Right? But Jesus is saying, don't lose heart. He says, continue in the relationship. And that's what Jesus is helping us to understand. Right? Eventually, God will answer. We know that. But he may not answer the way we want it to be answered. But he will answer. Because he is a caring God. And that's why he says, don't lose heart. Don't give up. Remain in the relationship. He goes on to say in the parable, he said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. Here you have this judge, uh, you know, 
and he and 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 the uh, parable says he neither feared god nor has had any respect for people here is the ultimate narcissist he only cared for himself he had no respect for anybody else absolutely nothing to make him to serve others right it says he had also had no respect for god right no concern their welfare least on his mind foremost in his mind what's in it for me what am i going to get and notice it says he was a judge so maybe he every time people come he's probably looking under the table because you know we say under the table right you pass things on uh, so this man was probably you know extremely corrupt because he didn't care for justice he only cared for himself and so maybe he lined his pockets with all the bribes that came in right and when this widow came which we we will read in a moment even then he was so heartless he wouldn't provide the justice that she was asking for and you know when a widow comes and asks for some help god takes it very seriously you know you know how seriously he takes it let me read you exodus chapter 22 verse 22 it says you shall not abuse any widow or orphan if you do abuse them when they cry out to me i will surely heed their cry my wrath will burn and i will kill you with the sword and your wives shall become widows and your children shall become orphans notice how serious god is god is extremely serious those who are vulnerable those who are helpless those who are needy we be we better be careful how we treat them we must be utmost as christians as disciples of jesus must be extremely careful how we deal with these people who are vulnerable needy people and perhaps i should say the way we treat the needy is the character that we show as christians in in one sense i would say peoples and nations are judged by the way they treat their vulnerable people the nations and prime ministers and kings and presidents will be judged on the way they treat those who are poor needy those who are minorities those who are refugees i think god takes special attention with them doesn't he say in matthew 25 even if you have done it to the least of these who have you done it to christ our lord jesus christ identifies with the poor the vulnerable the widow the orphan those who are don't have the strength to protect themselves he takes it very seriously anyway that was an aside let's move on with the parable in verse 3 it says in that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying grant me justice against my accuser now we don't know what the offense was we don't know exactly what kind of justice she was looking for maybe she was uh, maybe she needed protection maybe she needed some restoration because she was cheated we don't know it is not told uh, there in the passage but notice it says she kept coming kept coming in other words persistence she was not discouraged by the judge's response or lack of response she kept coming she believed in a world where justice will be done for her and in that respect sometimes when i'm watching a news item or watching something uh, you know on television uh there are people who talk about justice in our country and there are those who have been slighted or are 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 going to the courts for some kind of they say i believe in our judiciary i believe in our judiciary and it's very interesting that they say that and it's good that they say that at least we can trust our judiciary right but this lady kept coming because she trusted that one way or other she will get justice she she trusted the probably the judicial system or maybe it is god who she, she trusted but moving on it says in verse 4 for one for a while he the judge refused but later he said to himself 
though i have no fear of god and no respect for anyone yet because this widow keeps bothering me i will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming the judge gives him this corrupt hard hearted judge gives him though he was ungodly had no respect for god and had absolutely no concern for anybody else he gives in and maybe he gives in not because he really wanted to see justice maybe he wanted to protect his reputation remember he was an ultimate narcissist he only looks after himself he doesn't care for anybody else maybe he said what will people say you know um, i have to protect my reputation and so maybe that's the reason why he 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 uh, uh you know gave uh, the justice that she was looking for right and interestingly in the in the passage the way it is written in the, in the original language it says yet because this widow keeps bothering me i will grant her justice so that she may it says not wear me down the original actually says so that she may not give me a black eye in other words you know black eye is somebody who boxes your uh, eye and you get a you know a black eye there uh uh so he was worried about you know uh, not that she would resort to violence but it was almost like violence the way she was coming at him it was almost that she was going to punch his nose uh, and give him a black eye but then uh, uh even this most undesirable unpleasant nasty distasteful person was willing to give justice but now notice what how jesus makes the contrast verse 6 and the lord said listen to what the unjust judge says will not god grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night will he delay long in helping them i tell you he will quickly grant justice to them that is the important point jesus wants us to understand that god is not like this unrighteous ungodly judge though god is sovereign god cares he cares for us he is aware of our cry he is aware of how many times we are going to him and crying out to him he knows what we go through right just because we feel that justice is delayed and remember i was mentioning to you the context of this chap of this parable is actually about the coming kingdom the the coming of the God, of god's kingdom it is in that context which this is set in other words people were thinking when is the kingdom of god going to be established especially the jews were looking for a messiah remember and they said the messiah will come and establish the kingdom but the kingdom has not yet come and they were looking at jesus and he looked as though he is so weak that he wouldn't be able to bring in the kingdom but just because we have not yet seen the kingdom established just because things are taking long and still suffering is going on what jesus is saying is don't succumb to the temptation that god is uncaring don't ever feel in your heart that god doesn't care because he is not the unrighteous judge he is not the judge he is a loving father and in his time he will answer right that's why jesus says don't lose heart keep praying so jesus knows that we will feel bad because we feel everything is delayed we are not getting the healing we want or we are not getting the 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 you know the redemption that we want or we are, the kingdom is still not yet come so much of suffering going on jesus says don't lose heart now you may ask me but why this delay why can't god just answer 
and you know quickly give us the redemption that we need the relief that we need and i confess to you i don't have the answer for that i cannot give you a valid answer for that i can only say perhaps if things are being delayed maybe god wants us to look at the situation more thoroughly more di or probably differently maybe he is telling us ask for wisdom so that you can deal with the situation or maybe he is telling us ask for more insight so that we see something we don't see or maybe he is telling us ask for strength so that you may endure the suffering that is all i can offer you but if you ask me why is god not answering i have no answer for that because god only god knows but one thing i can say god will answer at a time that he determines because he is the sovereign lord and he is not like the unrighteous judge who does not care he cares maybe he cares by giving us the strength to face it or the insight that we need so that we may see things differently or the wisdom that we may need so that we don't we may make good decisions in spite of the problems that is why prayer is relational so when you go to and pray to god and say god deliver me deliver me give ah uh, no you change your attitude and say no god maybe i don't know why you're not delivering me at this moment but i know you will deliver me maybe i need you see you then your conversation changes your conversation becomes more intense your conversation becomes deep your conversation begins to explore into god's ways of looking at things that's a relationship and that's the reason why jesus is helping us understand prayer is a relationship not a transaction relationship is where we remain in the relationship not walk out of it that's what jesus is saying don't lose heart remain trusting remain maintaining your faith remain uh praying right uh continue to converse though you struggle with it though you sometimes groan in your prayers the holy spirit understands the pain in your heart that's why we even have the concept of wrestling with god right that comes from the old testament wrestle with god god enjoys it he wants it he he wants us to wrestle with him in in the right way huh? right so that's a relationship that's why we need to understand prayer is not transactional i am not praying i mean thinking that you know that i am not praying correctly or maybe not enough time i am giving or effort or maybe i am not crawling on my on my knees and maybe i need to hurt myself or maybe i must wear god down you see what the what the what the the parable said the lady came and wore him down do we have to wear god down and god says bah let me just answer this useless fellow he is coming again and again that is not god god doesn't bang his forehead god hears right the worst of all the worst of all is to say that you have no faith and that's what sometimes we are tempted and unfortunately that is what sometimes some preachers tell you oh you have no faith that's why you are suffering that is a lie that's the lie of the devil because he wants you to give up the faith in jesus our lord that is not true the fact that you're wrestling with god remaining in the relationship shows that you have faith once again reminds me of a story i don't know if i've said this before but this is a story from america a young teenage girl who was struggling and suffering with some terrible disease went to one of these healing campaigns and she was ushered on to the stage and the preacher prayed and she fell on the floor lifted her up and and told her you are healed go 
and she in her euphoria at that moment that you know that moment of uh, uh, positive positivity that was infused in her and maybe the adrenaline that was rushing through her body she felt she was healed but one week later she began to feel the pains coming back she was so discouraged she called up and found and asked these people you said i was healed why am i not healed and the and the preacher or whoever answering the phone said because you have no faith she was so discouraged she was so hurt she was so disappointed that she would not have faith that she killed herself she couldn't take it anymore that is the unfortunate thing that uh, sometimes happens and we must be careful that we don't allow that to happen verse let me just finish off this uh, this uh, parable verse 8 i tell you it says he will quickly grant justice to them and yet when the son of man comes will he find faith on earth when the son of man comes in other words this is again the context is the kingdom coming of the kingdom right and so he is saying don't be discouraged if the kingdom is not yet here it will come it will come right because god is a god of justice he believes in justice he understands it he will he will grant it and he will indeed come otherwise we have no hope what is the hope we have you know ah uh, if we can't trust god if we can't believe in what he is saying life has no meaning life has no purpose it's because of jesus and his death and resurrection and his incarnation we have hope and that's why jesus leaves us with a rhetorical question will he find faith on the earth when he comes what he is really saying is will we persist in the relationship will we persevere in that relationship will we stay in the relationship or will we jump out will we be gone right will we remain trusting will we maintain faith let me end with a story this is the story of mother teresa uh apparently she went to the a president of a large corporation hoping that they would give her some donations to help her with her you know, uh with her uh, work that she was doing but he was not very willing and he said no 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 i don't uh, i don't want to help you know and then she tried to plead and then he was not uh you know responding and then she said can i pray with you and oh yeah you can pray but remember i'm not going to give you anything and she prayed and she hoped that his heart would change and then uh and she looked up and said you know uh, please remember us you know no 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 sorry i cannot can we pray again she said <laughs> and she she persisted in prayer and she prayed again and i think it is the second or third time he said okay here is the check you know take and go but to me what it's not necessarily the persistence that she she showed sometimes we can't do that we can will be thrown out but the fact that she was trusting she was trusting god that god will provide now whether it would be provided by this man or somebody else no but she believed that god will provide for the needs of the organization and that is what jesus is saying will i find faith on the earth when i come we his people must be remain faithful i started my sermon today with the conversation i had with my sister um talking about death and people dying and we praying and sometimes we don't know why there is no answer but all i could say to her was our only hope is our lord jesus there is no other hope in this world because i don't see any school of thought any philosophy any religion any thought you know any particular uh, discipline that can give me a sense of hope other than jesus because he proved through his resurrection that there is hope there is hope for those of us who die there is hope for those of us who continue to struggle there is hope for us for all of us who trust in him let us not lose hope in that let's keep praying as jesus says keep praying and don't lose heart mm-hmm.